it is test cricket time. The first test scheduled to play on January 31st till February 4th at Wellington. Brian Aldridge and Steve Woodward was appointed as the field umpires. Sri Lanka already played one test in the venue during their 1983 tour. Second and the last test played here and Sri Lanka lost the game by six wickets. On their first innings they scored 240 including, Ranjan Madhugali's 79 and skipper Soma Chandra De Silva's 61. Chatfield took four wickets. In return they bowled out New Zealand for 201. John took five wickets and Ramesh took four. But Sri Lankan second innings collapse for 93. Johan Gunez Kara was the highest scorer with 23 runs. Hadley took four wickets and both Snedden and Chatfield took three each. Due to this low score target for the Kiwis were 133 and they passed that mark easily with Bruce Edgar's 47 not out included. This was the first instance Sri Lanka bowled out below 100 runs in a test game. New Zealand team introduced a well-balanced side. Trevor Franklin and John Wright to open the innings. Then they have a solid batting lineup starting from skipper Martin Crow, Andrew Jones, Mark Great Batch, and Ken Rutherford. All-rounders, Grant Bradburn. Pace men Chris Pringle, Danny Morrison, and Willie Watson. Ian Smith to keep wickets. New Zealand made four changes from second one day international. They dropped, Richard Ride, Chris Harris, Gavin Larson and Richard Petrie from the side and brought back, Trevor Franklin, Ken Rutherford, Grant Bradburn and Danny Morrison. Sri Lanka too introduced a good side. In their lineup, Cherith Senanayak and Hashan Tilakaratni to open the innings. Asim Kaguru Sinha, Aravinda De Silva, Skipper Arjuna Ranatunga and Roshan Mahanama to strengthen the middle order. Ashoka De Silva to play as the spin all-rounder. Fallwed by their medium pace attack of Graham Labrui, Ramesh Ratnayak and Champakaramana Yaik. Also brought up Jayananda Warnayura instead of Sanath Jayasuriya to strengthen the spinning department. Out of the playing 11, Ramesh previously played a test game in this venue. In terms of experience this is Arjuna's 27th game. Three players played more than 10 test matches with this. That is Aravinda, 19 games, Ramesh 17 games and Asunka 10 games. For Ashoka and Roshan this is the 8th match, 7th game for Labrui. 5th for Champika. And both Hashan and Jayananda will play their 3rd game. Having said that a test debutant from Sri Lankan squad. This is the debut game for left-hand opening batsman Cherith Panduka Sinanuka as the 47th test player for Sri Lanka. He is 28 years old when calling to the side and already played five one-day international games for Sri Lanka. He was a proud product of Ananda College Colombo and during the first class season he represent Colombo Cricket Club. His performance earns him the slot of opening position to bat along with Hashan. Sri Lankan skipper Arjuna won the toss and he decided to field first. Not like in one day series so far, Sri Lankan bowlers took a good start on the first day morning session. Pace attack took the full advantage of the wind. But early in the innings, Sri Lanka got a hit. Their ex-opening batsman Roshan Mahanama got himself injured while trying to catch Trevor Franklin from the second slip. He injured his figure and had to leave the field immediately. When the score was at 5, Kiwi lost their opening batsman Franklin to Labrui for 3. Jones goes next for 5 to Ratnayak. Crow joins Wright and tries to ease the pressure but Wright goes next for 15 to Labrui again when the score's at 33. Next man Great Batch helped Crow to build 41 runs stand for the 4th wicket and he falls 2 to Labrui for 13. 3 runs later skipper Crow falls for 30 to Ramana Yake as the 5th wicket. So, New Zealand lost their half side when the scoreboard shows 78. Rutherford and Bradburn add up further 30 for the 6th wicket. Ramana Yake charged again and took Bradburn for 14 as his second victim. Hashan took the catch of Rutherford off Ramesh for 25 next. When the scoreboard says 131, Pringle goes leg before for Labrui for a duck as the 8th wicket. Wicket keeper Ian Simith scored run a ball 28 with 5 fours goes down as the 9th wicket when the scores were at 150. Last pair, Morrison and Watson add up much needed 24 for the last wicket and Ramesh bowled out Morrison as the last man. So, after batting only 58.2 overs, New Zealand all out for 174. Wickets divided among three Sri Lankan pace men. Both Ramesh and Labrui took four wickets each and remaining two goes to Champika. War Nauru was given only six overs and he went wicket less. This was the third lowest score by any team against Sri Lanka in a test match. And lowest in overseas conditions.
Previous lowest was 201 from Team New Zealand in the same venue in 1983. So, this will be a good advantage for Sri Lanka in the game. Sri Lanka started the innings in the first day evening. They have an easy 174 runs target in the first innings. Remind you that they have one player down and batting of Roshan Mahanama was in doubt due to his injury. But it was not a good start for Sri Lankan debutant Sherith Senanayak. He faces just 10 balls, could not able to score a single run and goes to Watson for catch behind the wicket. He become the 12th Sri Lankan to score a duck in his debut innings. Scoreboard shows 8 when this happens. After he departs Hashan and Asunka joins middle and lift the score to 41 and Hasna departs towards the end of the day to Morrison for 21. He was well settled and hit two fours already. At the close of play Asunka Gurusinha remain unbeaten for 17 and Aravinda da Silva yet to score a run. So, at the end of the first day Sri Lanka were 2 for 41. Second day started and Sri Lankan batters, Asunka, and Aravinda came to the middle with a positive vibe. Aravinda looks so dominant and he starts to hit Kiwi bowlers all over the ground. At one end Asunka played an anchor role and opposite end Aravinda went for runs. Both batted nicely and put up 143 runs for the third wicket. Asunka added 53 runs during the day before he goes out to his first day total and finally, he goes for 70 to Watson. That was the only joyful occasion for Kiwis during the day. Sri Lankan skipper Arjuna joined vice-captain Aravinda and batted throughout the day. At stumps Arjuna was not out 52 and he helped Aravinda to lift Sri Lankan total to 359 for 3. Undoubtedly, star of the show is Aravinda. He batted entire day and scored 203 runs not out. This is second ever double century scored by a Sri Lankan batsman. It was a tired day for Aravinda, but finally the end result looks fantastic. Now, he owned the record of highest individual test innings records for Sri Lanka. Third day starts. But, Arjuna had to leave field adding just three runs to previous day score. He loses his wicket for 55. Both Arjuna and Aravinda put 178 runs for the fourth wicket. That was the third best partnership for the fourth wicket by Sri Lankan batting pair. After Arjuna departs Ashoka da Silva walks to the middle to fill the gap of injured Roshan Mahanama. Ashoka faces 114 balls and scored 26 and gave a good help to Aravinda to lift the total to 449. They both put up 87 runs for the fifth wicket. Danny Morrison took the wicket of Ashoka and in two balls the wicket of Labrui too. After adding just five runs to the total, that is when the scores were at 454 Sri Lankan vice-captain Aravinda da Silva lost his wicket after Bradburn caught him off Morrison. Aravinda batted 509 minutes faces 380 balls and hit 40 boundaries for his massive innings of 267. In addition to that, this is a new ground record. Previously, in 1953 South African opening batsman Jackie McGlue made 255 not out in the same venue. And this is the third highest test innings ever in the country, second only to Wally Hammond's 336 not out in 1933 and Javed Mayandad's 271 in 1989. After he departs Ramesh took quick 26 off 27 balls with two sixers and three boundaries. Finally Watson took him and the last man wore Nauira to restrict Sri Lankan innings to 497 all out, this is Sri Lanka's highest ever test total till date passing their previous best of 491 for 7 against England at Lords in 1984. Champika Ramanayak remains unbeaten for 14. Morrison took 5 wickets for 153. This was his fifth 5 wickets haul in a test match and first in Wellington. Willie Watson took 4 wickets as well. They too are the only wicket taking bowlers for New Zealand. So, on the third day New Zealand start their second innings. They already behind 323 runs. With that in mind they batted steady and slow manner and played safe till the day end. Both openers put up 91 runs when umpire calls it a day. At stumps, John Wright was 55 not out and Trevor Franklin was 24 not out. Fourth day began. Still New Zealand team trail by 232 runs. Long way to go to come out from the danger zone. Two Kiwi openers add runs slowly and lift the score to 134 by adding another 43 runs to their overnight score of 91. At that instance Ramana Yake took the wicket of Trevor Franklin leg before the wicket for 39. He faces 176 balls and hit just three boundaries. This is the first ever century stand for the first wicket against Sri Lanka by Kiwi opening pair. 
previous record belongs to Jeff Howarth and John Wright for their 97 runs stand at Candy in 1984. Adding another 14 runs to the total Ramana Yake returns again with the wicket of Wright. Left-hander added 33 runs to his previous day score and fall for 88 by giving a catch to Hashin behind the stumps. This was Wright's 19th test 50 and first against Sri Lanka, passing his previous best of 48 at Colombo S.S.C. in 1984. He batted for exactly 4 hours, faces 168 balls and hit 13 boundaries. Once he departs skipper Martin Crow joins Andrew Jones. At this moment onwards, no luck for Sri Lankan camp. Both start hitting the ball all over the park and gave numerous pressures to Sri Lankan bowling department. At stumps of the fourth day they lift the team total to 369 for two and maintaining unbeaten partnership of 221 runs for the third wicket thus far. This is the eighth best partnership ever for any wicket in New Zealand test cricketing history and fourth best for the third wicket. At stumps Andrew Jones not out on 82. That was his sixth test 50. On the other hand, star of the day, Martin Crow strongly standing with 126 runs not out. That was his 13th century, his first 50-plus score against Sri Lanka. Due to this performance at the end of the fourth day New Zealand managed to make a lead of 46 runs. Just little bit ahead but still long way to go. Fifth day started with this condition. But Martin Crow is having some other plan. It was dizzying stuff. As luck would have it, some of the most glorious moments in New Zealand cricket came as a test was petering out to a draw. All but a handful of Wellingtonians were at work. And while everyone thought the game was going nowhere, Crow and Jones thought otherwise. Together they provided a banquet of records. They must have left the Sri Lankans completely dispirited after two and a half days in the field. He reaches his 200 in the day. innings than any New Zealand test batsman. Not only that both Crow and Jones break the record of highest partnership for any wicket in test history. Only a couple of days ago they were contemplating their first ever test victory away from home. It was until Crow and Jones came centre stage. Richard Beck, One Network News. Finally in the last over of the day he lost his wicket for 299. It was quite heartbreak, skipper score lost his wicket just one short before scoring first ever New Zealand test triple hundred. Firstly, he passes his previous best of 188 runs which he scored twice against West Indies and Australia in 1985. Secondly, he passes the highest individual test score by a Kiwi batsman by passing Glenn Turner's 259 against West Indies in 1972. Overall, this was New Zealand's sixth double ton. In 1932 Don Bradman remained not out 299 due team all out. In the history of the game this is the first player who got out at 299s. Also, both Jones and Crow put up 467 to the third wicket. That is another world record. Previously for the second and third wickets there were 451 runs stands. For the second wicket that record goes to Bradman and Ponsford against England in 1934. And for the third wicket it went to Myandad and Mudassar against India in 1983. New Zealand's previous third wicket stand belongs to Martin Crow and John Wright's 241 which they put against West Indies in the same venue at 1987. Also their previous overall best was 387 for the first wicket by Terry Jarvis and Glenn Turner in 1972 against West Indies. That was a day to remember for New Zealand cricket. I know I'll be uh, very delighted at the end of the day that uh, not only did Jed and I 
set a nice world record, but um, I've, uh, I've got a good score to be proud of. We were three, three thirty behind. Um, we just really just had to bat and bat and bat, and um, we just took it session by session, you know. And um, we, you know, we got through a few sessions. Andrew Jones scored 186 off 454 balls in 562 minutes to support Crow to build this innings. This was Jones' third Test hundred and his highest score ever. His previous best was 170 not out against India in February last year. After the century he was bit struggling in next eight innings even without a 50. Due to these two performance New Zealand managed to score a mammoth 671 for four in their second innings. This is the first time this team passes 600 runs in an innings and their previous best was 553 for seven against Australia in 1985. They passed 500 runs in seven occasions already. Not much joy for Sri Lankan bowling camp. They use eight bowlers but only Arjuna and Champika took wickets. Martin Crow was adjudicated as the man of the match. Uh, I set my sights that day of getting to that uh, particular score of 260 and I felt totally in control in doing it. But um, if I can perhaps go on and say that when I came to the, the 290s and going to 300 I had no idea uh, how I was really going to do it because I'd never even thought about it. He's caught! He's caught! Staggering! It's interesting look, thinking about that, that 299, that near 300, was that I stood there before the bowler came in the bowl thinking that I'd already done it. And I was thinking about the pats on the back and the glory that came with it and the accolades and what have you. And I forgot to turn on to the next ball. And yet for 10 hours I'd done it previously. He batted for 610 minutes, faces 523 balls and hit 29 boundaries and three sixers to his magnificent innings. So, with lots of runs and records first test ended up with a draw. In our next episode let's see what has happened in the third and final one day game.